Gen AI is mostly a sandbox uh, which uh, opportunity, which I think is fine for reskilling service provider teams. I think the biggest challenge today right now that could derail AI investments is building a credible business case that has some hard metrics around it. So um, if you look at the infrastructure and chipset, there's hundreds of billions of dollars being invested there. I think operators need to focus on strong business cases to drive revenue and productivity improvements. So I'd say one of the first challenges we're seeing with telcos um, and AI is just the experience level of um, some of the telcos that have, uh, how much experience they have within their organizations for AI. And so we're trying to augment that with our ecosystem as well as our developers. Also, of course, there's a, a legacy systems. When you talk about radio access networks, for instance, you need to move to more software defined um, and AI compute accelerated compute capabilities. So I would say experience and legacy systems are perhaps the biggest challenges we're seeing. The availability of training data sets in the telecom space, acquiring and preparing these data sets can be complex, time consuming process, particularly when dealing with the diverse and distributed network environment. Another significant challenge is the skill gap within the workforce. Many operators find it very difficult to bridge this gap. Lastly, the integration of MLOps, AI ops, even foundation model ops, LLM ops, integrating all these ops system into the existing telecom IT infrastructure is going to be extremely challenging. Telco systems are often legacy heavy and highly customized, making it difficult to seamlessly incorporate AI-driven operations. You know, the first challenge is really getting planning and strategy aligned to the three key areas, and that's the first one is cost reduction. Um, so what is the next evolution of cost opportunities to continue to monetize their network? The second is feature enhancements. Our customers and consumers are going to expect continued improvements in feature sets and I think each of the operator will have to keep up, so we need to plan for that. Maybe that's tra uh, call trends coding or call translation. And then uh, finally, generating new revenue streams. So each one of those need a plan. The second one, uh, and it's a fairly big one, and that is sustainability. AI, if you've been reading, takes a lot of power uh, to power and cool the system. So I think the sustainability and power consumption is gonna be the second one. Uh, the third one's investment. Uh, just like with anything else, the operators would have to deploy some type of a capital investment or partner with other companies that joint invest. And so I think that, especially when we're thinking about inferencing at the edge, there's capital infrastructure that would be need to be deployed. Uh, and HPE has been involved in trying to make this a lot easier by creating a very large ecosystem of partners from ISV partners, hardware partners, especially on the acceleration side for GPUs. Uh, and then even the NEPs, the traditional NEPs that are doing great work in all of their applications. So we built this great ecosystem and we even now are offering uh, predefined, pre-validated systems to get the operators up and started quickly. Hmm.